Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back in today for another weekly video log. It is May 2nd, 2016. I hope you are doing well. I'm doing very well myself, and I'm very excited to be talking about games, games, more games. Uh, and also, I'm going to be talking, doing a special pop culture episode where I'm going to be talking about something not related to board games at the end, which was my experience volunteering at a Bernie Sanders rally today. I'm not going to be talking about the politics and why I love Bernie Sanders or anything about that. I'm just going to be talking about the experience itself because I thought it was kind of interesting. But before we get down to that, we're going to be talking about games, games, more games. And I also wanted to mention next week at 3.45 Eastern Standard Time to 4.45 Eastern Standard Time, hopefully, I will be doing an Ask Me Anything where you can ask me any questions you want to ask me. So that will be next week. And if you have questions, if you won't be able to do it because of work or something else, you can ask those questions right down here, and I will be sure to answer them next week. But let's talk about games, games, and more games first. The first game that I'm going to be checking out, hopefully, in the next week is The Exodus of Israel. I just got this one in the mail from Upland Row. This is a Game Crafter game, which, by the way, I gotta say, Game Crafter really stepping it up. This is a really nice looking game. Um, nice looking box. So, very impressed with this. This is for ages 5 plus, and that's what intrigued me. He said this was a children's game, and I was like, hey, you found your guy. Uh, two to four players, 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, I did not realize it was a religious game, and I'm not, uh, I don't think I've ever reviewed a religious game before, so this will definitely be an interesting experience. So that is the Exodus of Israel. I do worry a little bit about this game. It says ages 5 plus, but as you can see on the back, there's a lot of text on these cards, and most 5-year-olds I know cannot read that well. So I'll be sure to let you know about that when I get a chance to play Next game that I got a chance to play this week was the best treehouse ever from Green Couch Games. And uh, Green Couch Games, really, they're starting to get a nice little niche for making these lightweight family slash filler games. And this is a really enjoyable game where you're going to be building, well, the best treehouse ever by drafting cards and trying to get colors to match up. Now, the gameplay itself is just fine. I really did enjoy this game. You're going to see a, a positive review of this. But really what made this game for me was the fantastic artwork. I loved the artwork in this game as you're going to be building up your treehouse with just this really fantastic childlike artwork. It's a fantastic filler game, a family filler game, but it still has enough bite in it that I think if you have a lighter gaming group, you can still have fun with this as a filler game on like a game night. That is the best treehouse ever. Really enjoyed that one. Can't wait to play it some more. Next game that I got a chance to play, coming to a Kickstarter near you in the next month or two, is Shibboleth. Shibboleth. I don't know who it's from. Actually, it might be on the rules. But this is a gamer's... It's from... An Illuminate Ink game. Uh, this is a gamer's version of Love Letter. And I can already tell you, I had uh, it had a couple bumps here and there. The rule booklet was not the best. And I told him he probably needs to fix some things in the rule booklet. And hopefully he'll take that advice and, and fix some things. But I really enjoyed this game. Now, I really liked Love Letter. And this is in the same ilk. It's two to four players. Uh, and you're going to be trying to survive. But this is actually during a revolution. So which card survives is going to gain you points, but at the same time, it's just like typical love letter, where you're gonna have one card in your hand, you're gonna draw a card, and then you're gonna play one of those two cards. They will do various different things. And most of the cards are also very similar to love letter. Like there's one where you're gonna try and guess what the other person's card is. There's one where if you discard it, then you automatically lose, stuff like that. However, there's gonna be three cards in the center of the table. Two are gonna be good guy cards, and one's gonna be a bad guy card, and that will always be randomly designated. And if you force someone to discard a bad guy card, then you're going to gain bonus points in round. So in the round. Likewise, if you stay alive and you have one of those two good guy cards, you're going to get bonus points as well. So it has this really nice twist to it. Really like this one. This is Shibboleth. Not to mention, i got to show you some of the artwork. Absolutely gorgeous artwork. That's a review card. Uh, reference card. Yeah. Gorgeous artwork. Look at that artwork. Beautiful. Beautiful artwork. So that is Shibboleth. So, next game that I got a ch that I got in the mail, actually I haven't tried any of these three games, is Perspective. This is a new micro game from Minion Games. Uh, this is for one to four players, 15 minutes to play, ages nine plus. And hopefully, I, w I was hoping to play a solo game of this this past weekend, but the rules were just a little bit, eh, they were a little bit boring to me while I was trying to watch basketball, so I just didn't end up doing it. 
Uh, but this is more of an abstracty kind of game, a puzzly kind of game, where you're trying to get uh, various different patterns. You're going to have three cards in your hand. You're trying to get your hand to match the pattern in front of you, and the cards are going to tell you to do various different things like twist cards and flip cards and stuff like that. It looks promising. It looks like an abstract little micro strategy game, which uh, generally isn't one of my biggest things that I love, but it's not something I hate either. So uh, you'll probably see a solo gameplay video of this in the next week. Not to mention a review after that. I got another micro game from Minion Games. That is Sun, Moon, and Stars. This is 6 plus. Oh, age is 6 plus, so it's a very simple game. Two to four players take about 20 to 30 minutes to play. I'll read the back for you. Let's see. The spirit animals chase the sun, moon, and stars through the heavens seeking fulfillment. Wolf hunts deer while deer hides and flees. Al is the wise one above the chase of deer and wolf, but sowing discipline is serpent who can... Bleh, what? I have a feeling this game is going to have absolutely no theme at all. Um, the back of the box is just pure dribble, but if the gameplay is good, that's what you want to know. So hopefully I'll be able to tell you that next week. So, next thing I'm going to be talking about is how I'm about to close this door right here. So, the final game that I got in the mail this week is one that I am incredibly excited about. Uh, this I don't normally ask for games from uh, to review from companies. I just, you know, if they want to send it to me, they want to send it to me. But this one, I actually almost asked for. And then they sent me a copy of it anyway, because I have a previous relationship with them. And that is Escape the Room, Mystery at the Scar Gazes manner this is from think fun game three to eight players ages 10 plus take about 90 minutes to play and this is a create your own escape room in your house i am very excited about this i am pumped about this i'm thinking about trying to record it setting up my camera up here in the corner of my uh, my basement and then setting up a microphone and seeing if that works uh but either way i am super excited to get this played i've always wanted to try an escape room and i heard uh, i've seen a couple of reviews saying this is fantastic so i am very excited to check this one out that is escape the room from think fun so those are the games i got a chance to play those are the games i got in the mail this past week so now i'm going to talk about quote unquote politics i'm actually going to be talking about my experience at a bernie sanders rally I'm a big bernie sanders fan and uh i was going to a rally today and uh, i was at my local college ipfw it said the doors open at 11.30, so I was like, maybe if I get there early, I can get, you know, a good seat. I didn't know exactly how everything worked. So I got there around 9-ish after I dropped my sons off, and there was a line that was already three to 600 people lined up outside the door, drizzling rain, and I'm like, yeah, that's not happening. You know, I got finals this week, I got other stuff to do, there's no way I'm going to sit out in this rain for what would amount to about two, two and a half hours. So... I was like, you know what, maybe I can get inside somehow, maybe I can play the, hey, I'm an IPFW student card. I was like, you know what, I'll give it a whirl. So I walk past the line, I walk confidently into the building, uh, and I ran smack dab into a guardrail with about 14 cops. No exaggeration, just standing there kind of chit-chatting. And, but I did notice that they were letting some people through the guardrail. They were just kind of walking through, you know, looking like they belong there. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I can do that. So I pinned my Bernie Sanders button that I had on my book bag onto my chest, and I confidently walked through that guardrail. Nobody said a word to me, which, by the, by the way, that works so well so often. Just look confident wherever you go. Um, so now that I was in there, I was like, uh, what do I do now? So I, I kind of just walked around. I finally found a couple people who were walking around who didn't look too nicely dressed. They weren't wearing like suit and tie. They weren't part of the security, the secret service. Because yes, that place was swarming with secret service police officers, which caught me a little bit off guard. Uh, so I followed them for a little bit. And, I, and eventually they led me to where they were volunteering. And I just kind of lumped in with them. And I ended up volunteering for the day. I wasn't planning on volunteering for Bernie Sanders. I just planned on going to see him. But they were like... Hey, you're volunteering because you're in this big group of people. So I was like, sure. And uh, I was put in charge for the most part of escorting people from the special door, the disability door, to the ADA section. I think that was called ADA. So essentially, I was helping everybody with disabilities from the door to their seats. They had really, really great seats. They were close enough they could spit on Bernie Sanders. 
pretty much if they wanted to, which I, they wouldn't want to. Uh, you know, wheeling them in, doing all sorts of that thing, uh, just making sure they were comfortable. And I was really good at it. I knocked it out of the park. I was very cordial. I was like, yeah, you ready to feel the burn? Getting people excited because that was another part of our thing we were supposed to do. And uh, I was very excited. They did not open the doors at 1130. They didn't open the doors till like 12-ish. And then Bernie didn't come out until like 245. 245. Yes, the doors opened after 1130. He didn't come out till 245. So that was one thing that I found very frustrating. Now granted, I had something to do. I had a job, you know, so it wasn't big. You know, I could go to the bathroom. I had the pass, you know, nobody asked me any questions. I was good, but I can only imagine if I was super excited to show, see Bernie Sanders and I'd showed up at like 7, 8 o'clock so I could be front row and he didn't come out for another seven and a half hours? That's not cool. Uh, yeah, so that was really something that caught me off guard. Uh, some other just general observations I wanted to note about it. Uh, high security, the Secret Service was all over the place, which the more I thought about it, the more it makes sense. This guy's going to be potentially be the President of the United States. He's already a United States Senator. It makes sense there was a lot of security. Uh, but another thing was, I was really disappointed in their not selling merchandise. And this seems kind of odd. He talks about how he's raised, you know, like $198 million from donations, and you have, we had probably, I don't know, two to 4,000 people there, if not more. I mean, it was packed. It's hard to tell. But so many people asked me, hey, is there a place where I can buy pins, where I can buy shirts, where I can buy signs, where I can buy this, where I can buy that? And I kept having to tell them, no, there's not. And that seems like such a gross oversight. That would be like if you were a world-famous band and you're not selling merchandise at your concerts. You... They talk about how they've raised all this money. You could probably have raised double that if you're selling merchandise at these venues. So it just blew my mind they weren't selling these things. Even if you're selling them, you know, at cost or slightly above at cost, it's free advertising for you at that point. So that really struck me as surprising. Something else I wanted to note was, and I don't want this to be misconstrued as me as a whiner, because I don't whine. I'm not a big fan. I, I don't like whiners, and I don't whine too often. But this was a very thankless thing. Um, at no point did anyone say thank you for the most part. It was just, not, not the people. The people said thank you for escorting them. But I mean the actual Bernie Sanders staff. And this might just be Bernie Sanders because I've never done a political thing like this ever before. I've never had an interest in it. I'm not a political guy until I met, until I heard about Bernie Sanders. But it was just, hey, you're a volunteer. Here's a pin. Here's what you want you to do. Go. And then once it's over, peace. There was no official like meeting before or after where they were like, hey, thank you guys. There was no, and we contributed. I mean, I think I was there for six plus hours. And it was like, hey, there's not like, hey, there's water here, or apples here, or pizza here, or lunch here for you guys. Thanks for your time or anything like that. It was just, here's what you need to do. Go do it. If you need us for something, if someone's causing a ruckus, here's our phone number, give us a call. But other than that, that was it. So I was just, I don't know, I was just expecting a little bit more camaraderie, a little bit more, uh, you know, thankfulness. But I, I guess not. I guess if you're there, it's for the cause. Which brings me to another point. Who the hell are these rallies for? Um, I, I love the rally. First and foremost, I'm a huge Bernie Sanders supporter. I'm not going to go into why. That's, you know, you don't want to hear about politics. But it was, it was an awesome thing. It was an awesome speech. You know, I, I got teary-eyed a couple times, which I was very surprised about. But everyone there waited for numerous hours and was already a die-hard Bernie Sanders supporter. I always, I always thought of these as something where, like, if you were on the fence, then maybe you'd go to it to, like, convince you one way or the other. But nobody's going to this unless you're already a huge fan of that person. So, I don't know. It just seems... I just don't understand the point of it. I guess it's to fundraise and stuff like that and just look good on the media to get people excited, but I don't know. I feel like this would have been better served if he would have just went around to all the local grocery stores, sat on top of the, the flatbed of a truck and just started yelling at people about his agenda. I, I don't know, because then he would have reached voters who weren't already Bernie Sanders supporters, if that makes sense. I feel like everybody there, already a Bernie Sanders supporter, you're just getting them pumped up, which I guess is good. But still, I thought that was a little bit odd. So any more observations I have? No, nothing I can think of. It was, a, it was an interesting experience. Is it something I would recommend? 
Not necessarily, but I will say, next campaign trail, I definitely want to contribute my time to a different one so I can see what a different campaign is like, since obviously his campaign is unlike any in history, since, you know, for a lot of different reasons. But um, would it be something I recommend? Not necessarily. It was long. It was thankless. It was uh, it was work. It was work. But uh, you know what? I supported somebody I like, and uh, that was kind of cool. Plus, I got a story to tell, so that's always good. Oh, not to mention, I got to shake Bernie Sanders' hand. And I do apologize. I had pictures and videos and everything. I've been recording on my phone all day, and I was super excited to post them in this video. And then my iPad wouldn't let me put videos from my phone onto there, so it was kind of dumb. But hey, whatever. Such is the way of life. So that was my weekly video log for May 2nd, 2016. If you're still here, be sure to post questions for the AMA next week, so that way I'm not just sitting there like, hey, we'll just wait for some questions. Yeah, we're just going to wait. Hey, 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 see you, John. Which, uh, post some questions down below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.